All right, so if you have a car stereo with uh, which you're in love with and can't part ways with, um, but it doesn't have any Bluetooth uh, functionality or aux in, as this one doesn't, um, this will be a guide on um, how to upgrade it and offer it um, a place in the future, so to say. So for that, we'll be using a uh, small Bluetooth module. I'll uh, try to link this in the description down below, but this particular board is quite hard to come by so in germany i do have the link for it but i um, might find some versions um from china and i'll link those down below uh, this one in particular is a five volt version at least that's what the listing said so we'll i'll be feeding it five volts um the uh the ones I found in China from China are actually 12 volts so those uh, should require even less uh, even less tinkering to power all right so the All right, so now that we have opened it, as you can see, I did um, put some scribblings on the board. I ignore those for the moment. Um, so keep in mind, your radio might very well look very different from this, but a typical layout should be roughly the same. So here we have the uh, central, the, the processing unit. There should be some some small arm, whatever something, a microcontroller. Um, and then we have the audio. Uh, this is kind of a, a switchboard, so to say. So this takes inputs from the radio, the CD, and uh, mixes them, and the aux in, which is uh, not, uh, not connected in this model. So there's a lot of unpopulated parts here which would connect the, um, the aux in or the uh, CD changer to, to this um, chip right here. And um, the first thing to do is basically identify where on your board this chip is, where uh, on, uh, in your radio. And I do have a data sheet of this one, and that is the TDA uh, 7419. And as you can see, it is a SOT28 package. And um, a bit further along, we will see the pinouts. So let me, right here. Right, so based on this, right, this tells us what kind of uh, inputs this has, and most of them are single-ended, and some are pseudo-differential. Um, after that, uh, you want to identify which one of the inputs is the CD uh, input. Mm, I do suggest using the overriding the CD input because, right, you still want to have the capability of using the radio, and also this should allow both of them to work so when you're not feeding injecting the the audio from the bluetooth the cd should work as normal right and and the radio is completely separate you might be wondering why we're not using the the special so this one has uh, how many um, this has four inputs this chip can switch between the problem is we can't really use the aux in in the back although that would be the most elegant way uh, we would need to somehow reprogram the microcontroller or find a way to select the aux in. So if your radio can do that or you know of a shortcut of doing that, then that is very nice. Uh, the pins are are laid out right there, right? And you can map them out and see which inputs they are. All right, and I have done that. And uh, in my case, these two capacitors are AC coupling the uh, the input from the CD changer. So they go down here and here. And after that, I, I didn't trace them. I, I just couldn't be bothered. So what I will do is I will solder the, uh, the, imp the outputs of the Bluetooth module to these two capacitors. I do keep in mind you have to put them on the other side of the chip. So don't solder on the, on the left side of the chip. All right, so um, Next up, we need to take a quick look at the uh, Bluetooth board and see what's uh, what's going on over here. So we'll be connecting 5 volts to ground and VCC. And um, the three wires for the output on the other side. So one of which is uh, audio left, 
Audio Right and uh, Audio Ground. And unfortunately, the audio ground is uh, not connected to the board ground. And even if it were, it's not going to be connected to the ground that we're feeding into the module because that is going through the black thing at the bottom, which is an isolation transformer, which basically floats the ground. So we will unfortunately have to bypass that and connect the audio ground on the right side to chassis ground. Chassis ground meaning the ground of the stereo so any point on onto the chassis or yeah and we will need to do this because the the chip on the uh the chip on the radio only accepts single ended inputs so the ground of the audio module has to be the same as the ground of the chip and so yeah that is uh, why we'll have to do that so uh, at first I didn't and uh, then I did add the ground and it did solve the problem I will show you guys that later on in any event, let's uh, start wiring stuff up. All right, so first of all, I'll uh, wire up the uh, outputs, the audio outputs. All right, so as I quickly go over the process of uh, connecting the wires, I do want to point out that uh, initially I did not connect the audio ground. And uh, you guys will need to do this at this step. All right, so I have connected all the wires uh, to the Bluetooth module. And um, I have also added a tiny capacitor here. To keep in mind, you will most likely not need it, but if you do put it in, to make sure to put a 105 degree, uh, 105 degree rated one because it should get quite toasty inside of the inside of the radio. And apart from that, I've just connected the output left and output right wires, which we will, as previously mentioned, connect to the two capacitors there. Now I'm looking for a spot to mount the Bluetooth module and I uh, have finally decided on uh, putting it on the uh, upper right corner, kind of, on the wall, so just above the uh, antenna input and the uh, radio circuitry. Alright, so now that we have found a good spot that we're happy with to mount this, we could either glue it in place, but that really isn't my style. Um... Or we could actually screw it in place, and luckily I have found two screws that are the uh, appropriate uh, size. And so I'll be drilling two holes in the case right now, and we'll uh, secure that in place. Alright, so now we drilled the holes, and uh, what is critically important at this stage is to not get them straight. So, as you can see, mine are a bit angled, and that is how you should do it, right? Otherwise, you'll run into a whole lot of problems. All right, so let's uh, see how it fits. All right, so now, now that we have secured the uh, Bluetooth module onto the case, uh, we will have to um, supply it with power. So as previously mentioned, we're gonna do this uh, using the L75-7805 linear regulator. So let's uh, chop its feet off right quick and solder some wires to it. All right, so now I'm feeding 16 volts into the uh, voltage uh, regulator. And so before we connect it to our $15 uh, board, let's see if it works. So can you guys see this? Let me clean up a bit. All right, so let's see, we're expecting about 17 volts on the left, which really should be the maximum a car's voltage should get to. And yes, we do have the 17. And so let's see on the other side, we should get a very stable five volts, which we are. All right, so the regulator is working. And so we can move on. This is how you're supposed to again connect the linear regulator. So you have this going to 12 volts the black goes to ground, you can connect it anywhere on the chassis and um, the right goes to the module and is the plus 5 volt rail. Alright, so now let's uh, tuck in the heat shrink. So at this point I will have to interrupt my past self again and uh, disagree with uh, the actions he has taken. So I'm at the moment connecting the um, the negative uh, to the uh, main capacitor of the radio and uh, although that is fine 
uh, the positive needs to go to a different spot. So if you connect it to the uh, constant 12 volt supply of the stereo, the problem will be the uh, Bluetooth module will never turn off. So from a current draw standpoint, that really isn't a problem because uh, it it takes about like 50 milliamps at most. So given, let's say, you have a 55 uh, amp hour battery, which is quite small, and that does equate to about 114 years of being able to run the module in standby. So that's not a big deal, but the problem is... Um, you will have to manually connect and disconnect from the from the Bluetooth module. If you do have it on uh, on the on something that starts up on, on a supply that starts and uh, stops with the with the entire radio, uh, you will have the advantage of the module itself calling your phone that has been previously paired and pairing with it automatically and also disconnecting when you turn the car off. So that is uh, quite a big advantage and makes the entire thing a lot more comfortable. So instead of uh, connecting it to the uh, plus 12 volts, I have connected it to, um, to the um, uh, ignition contact pin 7 on the A section of the DIN connector. And this will basically give a plus 12 volt supply uh, so long as the key is turned and the engine is running. And on the stereo, I have uh, this pin 7 maps out to roughly this spot on the, on the back of the board. And so all you have to do is basically move the white wire, so the positive 12 volt in for a module, to this pin. Next up, we'll uh, have to secure the linear regulator in place. And uh, do keep in mind that you will need something that will withstand uh, quite high temperatures. So I'm using two-part epoxy. And uh, yeah, I'm sticking that onto the can of the radio uh, circuitry. And um, there still is a lot of clearance, so th that, is, that is quite fine. Now we will uh, connect the uh, audio output wires to the, uh, to the stereo. And uh, at the moment, I am still lacking the audio ground. I uh, hadn't yet realized uh, its uh, importance. And but we will um, quickly cut to a point in the uh, future where, uh, well, it's still in the past, where I have connected this wire to the Bluetooth module. All right, so this is how the final assembly looks. Uh, we have the car input going to the regulator. This chops it down to uh, 5 volts, whatever the input. We're, uh, re we're smoothing it a tiny bit with this uh, input capacitor I've tucked in there. I don't think it's going to be that visible, but anyway. Uh, we're powering the board, and then the board has two wires that I've uh, tucked away that go to these two inputs, which are the CD changer inputs, CD drive inputs. And we're also fixing, uh, as previously mentioned, the ground. And I found a place on the, on the plane right here where they had some... Uh, surface mount resistors to identify the boards basically because it's a zero link it's a zero ohm link and uh, there's three spots for that which connect ground to ground so that is just for identifying the board so this one just had one and I've used one of the other spots to connect the ground and uh, yeah so let's see how this works right quick and so now the silent CD is playing so now let's uh inject our uh, Bluetooth audio. Alright, and this works perfectly. Alright. And if you, play, if you pause the CD, you actually pause the mute the Bluetooth because it disables the uh, it disables the uh, TDA chip completely. Um, so yeah, that is pretty much all. I'm gonna put it back together now and I won't bore you guys with that. And um, yeah, good luck with your project and um, if you have any questions, hit me down in the comments and um, yeah. So right now basically we're just feeding some positive but without having the negative. So this is a quick fix. Uh, we connect 
the audio ground to chassis ground and check out the difference. So we get a lot more bass, right, obviously. And that is kind of how it's supposed to sound. And that is pretty much all. So